guys and welcome back. So over the last few weeks, there's been quite a bit of an exciting buzz online about how more and more people are using AI tools to generate 3D relief models. And while it's super exciting to see more people jumping in, these tools aren't actually that new. So for those of you that attended the user group meeting last year, you may well remember Adam's session on the triumphs and pitfalls of using AI. And what's clear now is how how much easier and more accessible is actually becoming. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you some external AI tools uh, that we've been working with and how we can use them to create impressive relief models and then bring them into VCarve and Aspire. So stick around because by the end of this video, you'll see how simple it is to become an awesome relief modeler in a matter of minutes. So let's jump in. Okay, so we're going to be using ChatGPT for our first step. And that first step is creating our initial grayscale image. Now, there are many other AI tools that we could use, uh, but we're going to be using ChatGPT in this case. And the free version allows you to create a few images over a 24 hour period. Now, the first thing that you need to do is provide the AI with a prompt, like what it is that you want to make. And you've got to be very specific. So you can see my prompt here. So I've outlined that I want a grayscale image. I want it in an oval. And I've outlined the things that I want in that. So things like a deer, a log cabin, those sorts of things. Um, once you've kind of outlined what you want in that image, we can then move on to things like the contrast and the lighting and ultimately what we're going to use it for. So we want it to create a model, uh, uh, an image that's going to be used to create a relief model. And so we want it, that lighting balance, we want it very clear, we want sharp contours, textures. Um, and the reason that we want to you know, have a little bit of a focus on the contrast and the lighting is that if it can create a well-lit, high-contrasted image, then it's going to create us a cleaner and more accurate uh, relief model at the end of it. And so we're also sort of alluding to things like, you know, the relief itself should be made of organic shapes as if it was molded from clay, just to give it that, you know, real sort of relief model feel. So that's the prompt. And then this is the outcome. So this is the image that it generated. Really happy with that. You know, we've got a lot of detail in there. You can see my composition is in within that oval shape. It's pulled out all of the elements that I asked it to. We've got some nice lighting on there uh, and the contrast is really nice. And I think this will be a perfect image for us to then um, import into our next part of this process, which is going to be the part where we generate the actual 3D model. And so with that said, we're now going to be jump, jumping in to Sculpt OK. So Sculpt OK is an AI powered platform that enables you to transform 2D images into high quality 3D relief models um, that you can ultimately use for CNC machining, which is what we're doing, but you can also use it for laser engraving or even 3D printing. And with just a few clicks, you can generate depth maps and STL models that you can then ultimately import into your Vectric software. So we're going to have a look at how we can do that. So you're going to go over to this option over here. So we'll go over to your AI tools and you can see there's lots of different things here. You can see that they also have their own image generator as well. In this case, we're actually going to use the AI depth map. And then in here, this is where we then choose an image that we've already created or generated through AI. Um, I'm going to use this icon over here. OK, so this is the image that we've created. So I'm just going to bring that in and that's just going to take a moment to bring that in. OK, and then what we can do is we could go ahead and we could just uh, add a HD restoration. Go ahead and press fix and you can see it's just going to do that for us. Right then, and so you can see here, we've got our initial drawing, okay? So it looks pretty good. 
so we're going to use the color image option in this case and then we're going to use the draw option and you'll see it's going to take two credits um, and so the free version sets you up with a set amount of credits that you can use so you can create quite a lot of models within the free version uh, in this case we're just going to go ahead and draw that up which is now going to create us a series of options for us so we're going to have three different or four different results that we can then choose from. Okay, so we can see here it's generated um, our various options that we've got here. So we've got three different models to choose from. So just judging this just from the sort of contrast that we've got here, you can see we've got one that's, you know, we've got quite uh, a lot of height in here. Uh, over here, I can see I'm getting a bit more detail out of the actual stag, and here we're actually losing a little bit. So just from the offset, I feel like this is the better option to use. And so what we can do is we can use the option to just take a look at the preview of that, okay? So we could just confirm that and take a look at what that looks like. And then we can just zoom in and we can see the actual model itself and you can see that's pretty good and over on the right hand side in the uh, lithophone generator we actually have various options for us to you know further control what that looks like as it stands i actually think it looks really good however we could just have a look at the various settings so we can alter like the thickness and you can see that's just getting deeper kind of want to just reduce that a little bit so that's okay and then over here we've got model scaling as well so you can see the more we add there you can see it's just like it's just creating more uh, detail there so we're just going to emphasize that a little bit more and then if we just twiddle that around we can take a look and see what that looks like okay so that's not too bad and then we also have this option at the bottom which is the intensity weight okay so here you can see as i'm moving that it's just kind of making that map a lot bolder um, so i'm just gonna bring that down a little bit so we have we're more on the sort of detail end uh, and then again let's just twiddle that around okay and that looks pretty good so i'm happy with what we've got there okay so it's just going to cost me a few credits to do that uh, and which i'm now able to actually download this as an stl model and so we're going to download that as it is uh, so we'll just use that download option it's going to download that for us uh, and then what we can do now is we can jump into vcarve to import that okay so we're going to be using vcarve however you can also use aspire as well so we're going to start by creating a brand new file. So here we're just going to outlay, you know, our job type, the size that we want our part to be. So it's single sided. I'm going to go with a job size of eight by 12 and then half inch thick material. Then we set our Z0 position, our XY position. So on the top and then our XY in the lower left hand corner. Uh, and then we're going to set our modeling resolution. So I want to ensure that we've got lots of points to work with here. So we're going to go with a very high modeling resolution. And then we'll go ahead and press OK. OK, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to look at importing that model that we've created. So we're going to use this option here to import a model or a 3D component. We're going to select our model that we've just generated and we can see that's imported that here and it's automatically opened up our import 3D model form. OK, so the first thing we need to do is we need to sort of uh, sort out its initial orientation and then we need to size it so it all fits within our job space. So straight away I can see it's kind of at a funny orientation so we're going to switch to the front okay so that's perfect and then we're going to alter the size so we're going to match that to the y-axis of our job which is 12 we'll go ahead and press apply and then we'll center that model. Happy with that and I'm really super happy with the level of detail that we've got in there as well. So then we're going to go ahead and position and import that model. Okay, so at this stage, what we're doing is we're positioning the model relative to the model in plane. So everything that is the, in uh, a, like a bright blue 
is above the modeling plane and anything that's below will essentially be cut away. So I could actually use this to my advantage to cut away the sort of rectangle uh, backgrounds that we've got in there. I kind of don't want that. So I'm gonna do my best to try and eliminate that. Uh, so all we do is we just use the slider here and you can see that when I'm using that, now everything is coming through. So I'm just gonna bring that back up again and just nudge that down like so and that's pretty good okay so i can see that that background that rectangle will not be imported i can also see we're going to be left with a little bit of a hole here some zero spots here and here which is fine because we can fix that with a zero plane so we'll go ahead and import that into our session okay so these are the spaces that i was talking about but we can easily fix that so first off i'm just going to take that model i'm going to press f9 to fit that to our screen. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that model, we're gonna use this option here to create a vector boundary. Then we're gonna take that vector, press U to ungroup it. Then I'm gonna hold down Shift to deselect the outer border. We're gonna delete all of the vectors inside there. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to look at creating a zero plane. And that's just gonna fill out uh, that area that had no material there with a plane that essentially has zero height. And then at this stage, we're pretty much ready to go ahead and think about our toolpaths. And you can see that we've got a super nice model in here. And if we wanted to, we could look at increasing this. However, I do feel at this stage, it's got absolutely good height, but again, you can increase that, decrease that if you wanted. So I'm just going to undo that to just leave it as it were. I think we've got an incredibly uh, detailed, high quality model that we've imported. Right then, so we're going to switch over to our toolpaths tab where we're ready to go ahead and create our toolpaths. So we're going to use the set option here just to check over our setup. So the material thickness that we're working with is half an inch. We can see that my model thickness is currently at 0.22, which is um, okay. What I wanna do is I just wanna drop it down just so that we position that within our material block. And that just ensures that we're gonna avoid any flat spots um, should we ma machine that and the material could be slightly uneven. We're just gonna eliminate the chance of that happening. And so we're just gonna drop that down so that we have a little bit of a gap above. Okay, then we will go ahead and press OK. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at running a 3D roughing toolpath. Okay, so we're going to use a quarter inch and mil. We're going to use the selected vector. So I'm going to select our vector that we've got in our job. Okay, so that's that one here. We're going to give that an offset of 0.1. So we're just going to tell the tool just to go past a little bit so we can ensure that we're cutting around the edges of that oval and do that in a Z-level strategy, and then we'll go ahead and press calculate. In which case, you can see what that will look like by using that preview button, and then the software will just take a moment just to simulate that. What we see here is exactly what we're gonna get on our CNC machine. Happy with that. So next up, we run a 3D finish toolpath. So again, we're gonna use that vector as our vector boundary. This time we're going to use the 16th inch ball nose bit, okay? Uh, and then we're going to go and press calculate. And then again, the software is just going to take a moment to calculate that. We'll preview that. And then the software will simulate that for us. And we can see uh, using that tool, with the step overs that are assigned to that tool, we're getting really nice detail in there. Super happy with that. And I think that will carve beautifully on the CNC. So once it's done that, all we need to do then is we need to look at creating a toolpath to actually cut that out of our material. So we'll just close out here. I'm going to take our vector. So let's just get that vector. If we just switch on our vectors, that would help. So we'll take our vector and we'll go into our profile toolpath. We're going to cut all the way through our material on the outside. We'll assume we've got a hold down um, that doesn't require tabs here. Then we could go ahead and preview that toolpath and see the effect of that. We can delete our waste material by double clicking on that. And there we have 
a real nice high quality 3D relief model that looks awesome. And we've done that in a matter of, you know, a couple of minutes here. So at this stage, what we'll do then is we'll go ahead and save out those toolpaths and then we'll go and cut them on our CNC. So you can create yourself a whole library of impressive models with absolutely no stress. And we've only touched on how you can create unique images from AI prompts to then bring into Sculpt OK to actually create that uh, 3D relief model. But there are other options as well. So you can you know, take photos of your pets and then with those photos, you can upload those to Sculpt OK. You to go through the same process that we just did uh, to create relief models of you know, your pets, could be people. And honestly, I've had a go at this and I've got some really good results and I'm super impressed with this. So you can create yourself so much artwork just at the click of a button. So I encourage you to give it a try. All of the AI platforms that we've used or referenced in this video will actually link in the description so you can give it a go. And if you do, uh, share what you've been creating on the Vetrit forum or on our social channels. Don't forget to tag us. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you've not yet subscribed to this channel, then please hit that subscribe button for instant updates on the latest videos that we'll be releasing. So thank you for watching and happy making.